Greetings from Toronto, Canada. The Association of Southeast Asian Nations is a regional intergovernmental organization comprising of 10 countries in Southeast Asia, which promotes intergovernmental cooperation and facilitates economic, political, security, military, educational, and social, uh, social uh, cultural integration among its members and other countries in Asia. In ASEAN, the COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted economic activities and upended lives, tapering growth prospects like the rest of the world. The numbers are rising with most countries in the grip of a second wave. All 10 ASEAN member states have confirmed cases and the number of expected infections is fair to increase many folds in the coming days as most experience unprecedented rise in infections. Asian Development Bank gave an indication of the magnitude of the impact evident in the difference between the new numbers and the forecast made last year prior to the outbreak. ADP reduced its forecast for developing Asia by three point over, uh, points to 2.2% and for ASEAN by 3.7 points to 1.1%. 1, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me immense pleasure and honor to invite to our recovery town hall, the Secretary General of ASEAN, His Excellency Dato Lim Jok Hwai. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Ms. Samira Azek, for your kind introduction. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you today. China is ASEAN's biggest external trade partner and investor. In 2018, it had a share of 17.1% to ASEAN's total trade and contributed 6.5% to ASEAN's total FDI inflows. ASEAN supply chains are heavily integrated with China's manufacturing sector and as the member state tourism sector benefits from the large influx of Chinese tourists. Apart from China, the other countries significantly affected by the outbreak, US and Euro area are also among ASEAN's largest trade and investment partners. And the, in the ASEAN member states themselves are too directly affected by the outbreak. The WTO has estimated that the world trade is expected to fall by between 13% and 32% in 2020, exceeding the decline brought by the global financial crisis. Thus, the overall impact on ASEAN would likely be broad and deep, albeit the impact could vary across the region. Tour package cancellations, decline in arrivals, minus 23% in quarter one, low hotel occupancy rates, revenue on a low point, minus 36% in quarter one. There is a lot going on. What is the outlook for tourism recovery and beyond of ASEAN countries moving forward? Well, the consequences of the pandemic has claimed a substantial loss of job and caused total disruption to the economic activities, of especially tourism sector across the region. In the first half of 2020, many ASEAN members reported that tourism sector has suffered a sharp decline from 72% in terms of international arrivals, along with significant loss of 50% in tourism receipt when we compare with the same period of the previous two years. As the pandemic profoundly changed the landscape of the sector, uh, safe hygiene, substantially, and high-quality tourism products are the key elements to the new normal. Despite a tremendous efforts by ASEAN to shift its policy focus on measures on mitigating the impact of COVID-19 and adapting to the new normal, the outlook for the industry 2020, 21, 21 remain uncertain. Tourism is, of course, a core sector of ASEAN economies. It represents around 15% of the GDP and 40% of the employment of the ASEAN community. Uh, for some countries like Cambodia and Thailand, 
uh, tourism has accounted for a larger share in GDP, employment, export revenue, as well as other to other ASEAN countries. In this uh, context, uh, the pace of recovery in travel, tourism, and hospitality industry are well very much determined elements of ASEAN overall uh, economic recovery. We have great potential for ASEAN tourism industry growth and relentless measure by ASEAN governments uh, to control the pandemic. It's believed that ASEAN tourism will bounce back as it has a long proven its inherent resilience during similar crisis during 2008 economic crisis and SAR outbreak in 2003. As infections uh, cases continue to rise around the world, the risk of an abrupt tightening of global uh, financing conditions also heightens. On the other hand, while developments in the health sector at times appear overwhelming, the broader impact is on households due to the widespread loss of employment. Excluding public service, 43.8% uh, of ASEAN workforce or 126.9 uh, million people are employed in the service sector. Singapore has the highest percentage of employees in services at 65%, uh, followed by Malaysia at 56%, and Brunei at 56% uh, as well. However, in terms of absolute numbers, Indonesia has the largest number of workforce in the service sector, with 57.5 million, followed by, by Vietnam with 19.4 million, and Philippines with 16.3 million. With such no, uh, high numbers in tourism sector and service sector, how is the association uh, responding to the current situation? I think during the early stage of the pandemic, ASEAN member states took immediate unprecedented measure to instill trust and confidence among businesses and consumer as a key strategy to prepare for a quick rebound and resilient recovery. <clears throat> this measure include the provision of financial stimulus uh, to the most vulnerable groups in tourism sectors, such as front employees and MSME, strengthening hygiene and sanitary measure. Leveraging on the use of technological, <coughs> technological te technology and tackling fake or misleading information on social media, contact uh, co to combat COVID-19, among others. Uh, the policy focus has also shifted towards uh, helping businesses survive the unpredictable situation uh, and also help to um, adapt to the new normal in ensuring sustainable and resilient recovery. At the regional level, I think there were also coordinated efforts among ASEAN member states in the tourism sectors. <clears throat> in February 2020, the ASEAN Tourism Crisis Communication Team was activated to monitor the situation and coordinate efforts to deliver accurate and timely travel advisories to tourists in the region on the ASEAN Travel Tourism website. In April this year, a special meeting of ASEAN Tourism Ministers on COVID-19 was held to discuss and endorse a number of collective action uh, to mitigate the impact of the disease and to prepare the groundwork for the reopening sectors once the pandemic has been brought under control. I think there, are, there were several key decisions that come from the meeting. First, uh, ASEAN agree, ministers agreed to conduct an overall assessment of the impact of COVID-19 and a new dynamic of tourism industry post-COVID 
and to develop a comprehensive strategy to prepare at the, for the substantial recovery and resilient growth of the ASEAN tourism sector. <clears throat> Second, I think ASEAN shall adopt a, a harmonized set of regional guidelines uh, on new safety and hygiene protocols for travelers and uh, tourism industry, applying digital technologies to upgrade the quality of tourism services. Third, I think uh, promoting digital tourism is uh, regarded as a long-term solution for ASEAN. And fourth, the minister agreed to explore new initiatives such as uh, reskilling and upskilling tourism professional program, a regional framework to facilitate the uh, so-called travel bubbles for tourists, travelers um, among the low-risk areas or, or countries, and applying international best practices and a lesson to revitalize the tourism industry. Across the region, the ASEAN member states have rolled out various measures to counter the impact of the pandemic. Stimulus measures include, among others, tax breaks, subsidies, including targeted support and cash assistance, moratoriums on loan payments, and pension contributions. Central banks uh, in all of the countries have lowered interest rates, reduced reserve requirements, and purchased government bonds. Is the organization helping the regional tourism industry with any financial incentives, waivers, et cetera? Could you please elaborate on it? Uh, yes. Uh, most countries have uh, uh, taken macroeconomic measures, uh, such as financial incentive, and also waiver uh, given uh, and implemented by ASEAN member states uh, at the national level depending on the various solutions, situation, uh, available resources, and capacity of each country. Uh, across the region, ASEAN member states have rolled out various measures to counter the impact of the pandemic, stimulus me physical measures, including among uh, others, uh, tax break, subsidies, including targeted support and cash assistance and a moratorium on loan payments and pension contributing contributions. Providing liquidity and at this challenging time will support millions of livelihoods and ensure a prompt recovery of the tourist, tourism sector once the pandemic has been under control. At the regional level, ASEAN is intensifying its coordination efforts to multiply the efficacy of individual macroeconomic measures, including some of the form of financial supporting mechanism. ASEAN also has been collaborating with its partners on cooperation to counter the spread of COVID-19 pandemic. Specifically, in the financial cooperation, ASEAN plus three uh, countries have been working on strengthening in Chiang Mai initiative multilateralization, uh, multi-currency swap arrangement established to provide short-term liquidity to members in times of need and ensure uh, its operational uh, readiness special ASEAN plus three finance and central banks uh, deputies meeting was held throughout video conferencing last April when the deputies exchanged views on the financial uh, measure undertaken to mitigate the economic impact of the outbreak and also agree uh, to strengthen coordination at the regional level. Coronavirus disease um, uh, pandemic outbreak has severely impacted the health. 
uh, and well-being and safety of the ASEAN community. And, and it continues to pose imminent and unprecedented threats to regional and global economic growth and social development. Are you launching any further reports and protocols? Can you elaborate on this? What kind of coordination uh, are you uh, implementing with your member states? Uh, tourism cent uh, sector is a very much a labor incentive in nature and the main source of employment for many households in local communities, especially remote area. Uh, for that reason, revitalizing the tourism sector is key for ASEAN. In responding to the pandemic, ASEAN tourism officials are working out a series of ASEAN protocol, standards and guidelines on security and health factors for protecting employees, communities and other tourism related establishments. Uh, once it's completed, ASEAN member states shall align their domestic regulations and practices in the new protocols and standards. Uh, the pre new protocol uh, a crucial and integral part of the recovery plan as uh, they would establish ASEAN-wide safe tourism packages for both, I think, travellers and employees as well as local community working throughout in the supply chain and tourism industry. Notably, travel and tourism contributed 12.6% to ASEAN's economy in 2018. Among the, the member states, Cambodia, Philippines, and Thailand are the most vulnerable. They have the largest shares of GDP employment and export revenues from tourism. The pandemic may lead to long-term uh, economic implications. To restore confidence and to revive the economy, what are the commercial strategies, policies you envision that will be successful once the countries allow international tourism? Uh, there are many ways uh, that ASEAN tourism strategy direction is shifting. I think the first the issue of privacy and security, safety, uh, wellness and sustainability uh, would be a major factor for consideration by most international travellers as they decide uh, to visit a place or a country in the region. Taking this uh, into account, ASEAN has included these elements within the ASEAN tourism marketing strategy for 2021 to 2025. I think to ensure that we are able to cater these changes in consumer behavior and preferences. Second, I think individually, telemed tourism products as well as small tour group packages uh, will define the new trend of tourism coming for coming years. Travelers uh, are shifting their focus on a less visited destination to avoid uh, packed places. Uh, this stands raises opportunity for natural rural area, especially natural landscape, to be to become a, a go to option for uh, travelers. Third, the pandemic has also been a catalyst for digital transformation, especially in tourism sector. Digital technology is profoundly uh, transforming how tourism businesses operate, as well as uh, how tourism travelers interact. The use of uh, te digital technologies can help businesses to reach out more customer, increase efficiency, and unlock new tourism potential um, by linking different stakeholders throughout the supply chain. In terms of marketing, uh, digitalization continues to transform uh, the way we market ASEAN as that it has increased 
our ability to understand customer behavior. This uh, present, I think, us with an uh, opportunity to personalize uh, seamless and new experiences for travelers. Uh, digital marketing will continue to gain strength as well as to generate high return on investment if the objective are clear. And finally, promoting Southeast Asia as a quality single des tourism destination is an advantage for the region. Uh, tourism businesses models might need to adapt to hybrid engagement by combating physical and virtual offer related to the business and leisure event, attraction and others. A more coordinated initiative in promoting the mutual ecosystem of ASEAN tourism growth remains a real commercial value and in interest for both business and international travelers. Uh, it is also uh, important to highlight that by 2030, tourism industry would need to come to term with evolving uh, visitors. Omnipresent uh, technology and a complex uh, macro uh, environment. The COVID-19 pandemic may uh, forever change the landscape of tourism industry in the world and ASEAN tourism industry also uh, need, is not immune uh, to it. Um, it requires ASEAN to further our enhanced regional cooperation as a means to effectively transform the industry by adopting new trends and a new reality. As virus spread rapidly in China, most uh, of your member uh, states restricted travel from to China, which was then expanded to other affected countries such as Japan and Korea. By canceling flights and connections and tightening of uh, even closing border crossings, the immediate and uh, direct impact was thus uh, far and wide. With most borders closed, do you believe domestic tourism will be the key segment for ASEAN countries in the short term? And what uh, are the countries doing for the implementation and promotion? Um, during the second quarter 2020, uh, the UN WTO reported for the first time ever that 100% of global destination has introduced travel restriction. As a result, international tourism has largely been suspended and domestic tourism curtailed by a lockdown condition imposed in many countries. Recoveries uh, is now expected to start uh, sometime later as travel restriction and containment measure are anticipated to be lifted uh, gradually with the possibility of reversal uh, should new wave of COVID-19 occur. In this regard, the pressure on ASEAN tourism industry is unprecedented. In this condition, uh, domestic tourism could offer a relief and short-term solution. The ease of domestic travel also instill trust and confidence on tourism business after a long period of implementing social distancing. In fact, uh, some destinations in ASEAN have started to slowly open, reopen their domestic uh, travels once COVID-19 situation in the country are largely under control. Nevertheless, I think promotion of domestic travel is not a sustainable solution for a long-term development strategy. Uh, more importantly, I think ASEAN tourism needs to bring forward its plan to transform the industry to a more resilient and adapted in this new reality.
market uh, ASEAN is considered as a single destination and urgent need to strengthen the coordination mechanism to overcome challenges to the tourism sector following COVID-19. Which ASEAN countries do you see recovering first? Uh, given the uncertainty outlook, uncertain outlook uh, for international travel, many countries are moving to promote domestic travel and cater to visitors within their own country. Of course, uh, it goes without saying that the push for domestic travel has to be done only after COVID-19 risk assessment is conducted in this country. Since March, ASEAN countries have been taking extraordinary precaution measure to contain the spread of the virus. Depending on the different capacities and resources among ASEAN member states, the impact of COVID-19 on individual ASEAN member states have varied. Uh, some ASEAN countries have made a remarkable progress in containing the spread of COVID-19 by posing uh, strict social distancing rules and tracking or isolation strategy. In these uh, countries, we observe a high degree of success in the reopening of the uh, tourism sector. However, it's just a beginning of a long-term road to recovery as the uh, ASEAN tourism sector is highly interconnected and that no single ASEAN country can reopen alone. ASEAN countries are collectively expediting the development of a comprehensive regional plan for sustainable recovery and resilient growth in the ASEAN tourism industry post pandemic. The regional plan uh, for recovery is scheduled to be endorsed by the ASEAN Tourism Minister in the first uh, quarter of the 2021. Every crisis creates opportunities. What are the opportunities that will arise from the current situation brought for ASEAN uh, region? Well, uh, Behind any challenge, I think there is uh, always an opportunity. Uh, whilst the pandemic has severely impact, impacted the business and community in the ASEAN industry, uh, it also offer a reset button for stakeholders, including the government agency and also private sector to reconsider their core mission and readjust their businesses with a view to establish a sustainable and resilient tourism industry. Uh, COVID-19 outbreak will forever change the dynamic uh, of the growth and redefine the future of the ASEAN tourism cooperation. ASEAN should, lift, should shift on focus that uh, prioritize health safety, hygiene, environment, and sustainability, uh, quality services, and, and also social or ethnic uh, as determined element for the development strategy of tourism industry. Uh, it is imperative uh, that ASEAN tourism sector to continue uh, supporting the ongoing endeavor of business uh, who are navigating the crisis and by adopting a new business model, enhancing digitalization and promoting effective connectivity throughout the tourism supply chain. I underscore the importance of digitalization for tourism in offering ways, I think means to assist businesses, especially the MSME to improve their service quality and reach out to more potential customer uh, post-pandemic. Uh, in this regard, um, the ASEAN Declaration of Digital Tourism 
to be uh, adopted uh, during the 37 ASEAN summit in November uh, shall de demonstrate ASEAN readiness to transform the tourism sector and adopt the new normal during post-COVID-19 as a key strategy to their recovery. Thank you very much for your time and for this very comprehensive discussion today. We really, really appreciate because ASEAN is such an important part of the global uh, market and trade and uh, economic cooperation. Thank you very much. Many thanks to you and the World Tourism Forum Institute for providing me the opportunity to share my thought on ASEAN tourism industry amidst the pandemic. And I wish you all take care and, and all the best in your uh, work. Thank you. Thank you.